Hey, how's it going everyone? Welcome back to Keeping Fish Simple. So in today's video, we are gonna be talking about the top 10 most expensive fish in the fish room. Before I get this video started, there's a few things I wanna say before I talk about any of these fish. The first thing is that this isn't meant to be like a flex and I'm not posting this video to try and show off anything. I'm kind of just posting this video because I know a lot of people would be wondering what are the most expensive fish in the fish room. Another thing too is a lot of beginners, like when I first started keeping fish, I didn't even know that there was fish that cost this much in the hobbies. I'm just kind of making this to inform people on the prices of certain fish and also a lot of people can compare their prices of fish in their locality to the prices in my area. Again, this isn't solid information. Prices of fish vary all around the world. I might get the prices wrong on some of my fish. I also might get the order of stuff wrong, but in my opinion, these are the most expensive fish from 10 being the lowest to one being the most expensive. So with that being said, let's get into the video. Okay, and so number 10 on my list is gonna be the Epistogram of Fire Gold. These guys are dwarf cichlids, and I've got quite a few dwarf cichlids in my fish room that are pretty pricey. These guys are probably on the lower end. Actually, they're probably in the middle, like I've got some cheaper fish like my Blue Ram and my blue black rams that are a little bit cheaper than these guys but the epistogrammas can be quite pricey in my area depending on what type you want to get. I've kept cacatoides before and those guys are about 50 bucks each. I've also kept a few other different types. These guys are at about 50 bucks each as well so I keep the fire golds. I tried keeping them earlier on last year but I didn't really start having success with them till the end of last year and since then I've kind of put a little bit of effort in and only had them make one batch of fry. Now I'd like to have them make a few more fry but I really don't have space in the fish room for more fry of them. Them. The thing is too, because they are quite pricey and the demand's not insanely high, it's kind of hard to move them on. So you don't want like a huge amount of them in the fish room. I bought my pairs for about hundred bucks each, so 50 bucks per fish, and that's pretty expensive. So I do have some growing out. They will be available on my website soon. Coming in at 10 is the Epistogramma Fire Gold. Or I should be more specific, the Epistogramma Agassizii Fire Gold. And then number nine on my list is gonna be the Longfin Lemon Blue Eye Crystallized Plecos over on the other side of the fish room. I bought 20 of these guys originally, and I'm at about 16 or 15 of them now. I've been growing them out since they were little juveniles and they're nearly at the stage where they're going to start breeding. They've been pretty tricky to take care of, their genetics are pretty weak and I've just had random losses. I don't think it's anything that I've done. I've just struggled with them a little bit because of that. These guys, I bought them for about 45 bucks each. I don't think the price has changed too much since then. So I know that's a little bit less than what I was talking about before, but the reason I put them up on the list is because now they're adults, they will sell for a little bit more. They are worth a little bit more than the epistogrammas. I'd say nowadays they're probably worth about 80 or 90 bucks each, probably a little bit more actually. They could even be worth 100 bucks each because someone's gonna buy them to breed them instead of buy them to grow them out and then breed them. They might buy them to keep them in their aquarium, but it's more likely they'll buy something small to watch grow up if they wanna just keep it as a display. They're just a genetic variant of the common bristlenose. Breeders have done a great job at making a whole bunch of different types of them. I've also got super red bristlenose and I've also got just common long fins. Those guys are a little bit more cheap, but they could also be clumped into this category. The super reds would be about 50 bucks each and the common long fins would be about 35 bucks each. Those are just some bonus figures. Number nine is long from Blue Eyed Lemon Bristlenose. Okay, and then coming in at number eight is gonna be my raw whip tails. Now, normally the fry of these fish would be about $35 each to $40 each, depending on where you are in Brisbane. Yeah, in my area, the fry are about 35 bucks each as far as I'm concerned. But I actually have adults of these and I bought them as adults to breed them because they take a couple of years to grow out. And I'm assuming that they cost about 100 bucks each. The raw whip tails are pretty funny looking fish. They're like an oddball kind of weird catfish that I find quite cool. They look a bit like a stick. I've actually got a trio and I spent 360 bucks on the trio, two females and a male. So it actually bumps up the price a little bit. I'd say about 120 bucks each. It always depends. It depends on who your customer is and things like that, what your price you're gonna get. My raw whip tails, I'd say are about 100 bucks each to 120 bucks each. Yeah, they're fry are about 35 bucks each. They're pretty cool catfish. I've actually bred them twice and I failed both times. The first time I failed because my egg tumbler actually stopped working and the eggs all fungus up. And the second time my fry system stopped working and the juveniles died. That was pretty annoying. I'm still waiting to have success with them and I'm going to have success with them hopefully soon. Yeah, it's been a little bit frustrating because of that. Coming in at number eight is the Royal Whiptails. Okay, so now we're starting to get into some of the more expensive things and the more exciting things in the fish room. Coming in at number seven is some of my rare plecos. What I've done is I've just clumped together like a group of three different types of plecos because they're all around the same price. At number seven is my L270 chocolate zebra plecos, my L333 king tiger plecos, and my L397 just tiger plecos. These guys 
guys all cost around 45 to 50 bucks each as fry, and then when they're older, they're about 120 to 150 bucks each. At least what I've found when people are selling them as pears and trios and things like that. Mine are all adults now and have all started breeding, so they're all up around that about 120 to 130 dollar mark. As fry, yeah, they're about 40 bucks each to 50 bucks each, depending on where you are. But the reason I've clumped them all together is because I didn't want to just individually list them all off when they're all around the same price. They're all pretty common. They're pretty easy to find. If you ask around a little bit, you'll find a guy with some of these fish. The L270s are pretty cool. They look pretty similar to the L333s, except they have more of like a zebra pattern and they're more brown and chocolate looking. The L333s are pretty cool. They like have like a lot of squiggly lines on them. And I've got the yellow and the white variant. And then the Tiger Plecos just look amazing. They're like an orange and black kind of fish. They look really cool as youngins, but as they get older, they lose a bit of that luster, but they look pretty cool. And yeah, that's number seven is that group of Plecos. And then coming in at number six is gonna be my Farrowellas. So these guys are my twig catfish. You're gonna be a little bit confused why I put them here and that's because they're a little bit rare and they're a bit of an oddball fish so they're hard to find. When I bought them, I bought them as young little fish and I paid 60 bucks each. I don't know what they're worth as adults and mine actually haven't reached adulthood yet but when they reach adulthood they're gonna be a little bit more expensive I think than the plecos because they're a little bit more hard to find and I actually think they're a little bit more tricky to breed. I might be wrong on that, there's just not a lot of them in my area. The reason I put them above the plecos is because they cost around 60 bucks each instead of 50 bucks each so they're not winning by a lot. These guys are pretty similar to the royal whiptails. They're a little bit more thin. I think they look really cool. They kind of look like that sawfish. I don't know what it's called, like one of the fish with the saws on the side of it. I think it's like a shark or something like that. They fit in well with a lot of Amazonian tanks and they look like twigs. My hope is with my colony in the future when I move fish rooms to set up like a nice display tank for them and hopefully get them to breed in that setup. Yeah, coming in at number six is my Farrowella or twig catfish. Okay, and then coming in at number five on my list is gonna be another Pleco and this is gonna be the El Toro One Plecos. These are separate from the ones I just talked about before because they're a little bit more expensive and they're actually harder to find. I know this video is gonna get heaps of people commenting saying stuff like, you can find this here, or you're wrong, you're wrong, whatever, like I don't care. But these ones I found a little bit harder to find. Retail price is normally gonna be about $90 to 100 bucks each as babies. It might be a little bit less, I think I might have paid a little bit less, but I think that was mates rates with a guy that I know. I'd say they're about 80 bucks to 100 bucks each. That might be wrong, but now I've got an adult colony. They're definitely worth a lot more. I've actually got six of them, and I haven't lost a single one since I've had them. And I've had quite a lot of success keeping them. They've actually been breeding for me, and I've only had about 11, or 10 fry come through them so far. They're a little bit more tricky to breed. They're probably not like a great profit fish unless you're really good at breeding them. And hopefully in the future, I'll get better at breeding them. Yeah, number five is the El Toro One Pleco. They're really cool. They've got like a snowball pattern over them. They're not actually snowball plecos. Snowball plecos are the L471 and those are worth a lot more. They stay a lot smaller and they're a lot more cute. These ones are actually called a Orinoco Angel Pleco. So they're not to be confused with the L471. And these are the L201 and they get a little bit larger. They're not as common. I don't actually have any of the L471s, but they look very similar. Fry are about 80 to 100 bucks, and then I think the adult colony would be about, I'd say 600 bucks a pair, so probably 300 bucks each. That all depends on who wants to pay it. So coming in at number five is the L201 Orinoco Angel Pleco. And now we're starting to get into some of the really expensive stuff in the fish room. So coming in at number four is gonna be the Dark Knight Rams. These are a little bit of a funny one because I've actually made all the Dark Knight Rams that I have in the fish room. I bought a blue black ram and I bred it to get the dark knight ram. Now, I haven't been as successful at line breeding these as I want to. I'm starting to get a little bit better at it. I don't have many of them in the fish room at the moment. I probably only have actually about 10 and I'm gonna use them all for breeding so they're not gonna be sold. But I did have quite a few available in my last generation and I did sell quite a few of them then. And I was selling those for about 375 bucks a pair. So rounding it down about 185 bucks each. They can definitely go for up to 200 bucks each, but when I sell them in pairs, I like to give people discounts. So the reason they're so expensive is because they're so rare and they've got that Dark Knight gene, which is so rare here in Australia and so hard to find for some reason. Yeah, the Dark Knight Rams, one of the more expensive ones, they're kind of up there with the discus pricing. And I'm hoping that at some point that will come down because they are a really cool fish. That might not happen for a little bit. I have seen them getting a little bit more popular in my area. Maybe that means that there's gonna be an abundance of them and the price will come down, but it's probably gonna take a lot of breeders to do that. Yeah, coming in at number four is the Dark night ram and then coming in at number three on my list is going to be the leopard frog pleco i've had leopard frog plecos for a bit and i actually just downsized my colony so i originally had two colonies i had a colony of seven and i had a colony of 14. the colony of 14 i actually bought as adults and i've recently just downsized that colony because i didn't need a big colony down to six i actually do have updated market numbers 
on the Leopard Frog Plecos, at least in my area. So as fry, I think they sell for about 120 bucks to 130 bucks each. Some people might sell them for a little bit less, but that's normally the price for the fry. And then the adults, depending on sexes, can sell from about 350 bucks to 400 bucks each in my area. They're a pretty expensive fish, and the reason they're expensive is because they're a little bit tricky to breed compared to some of the other plecos. Some people might find them a bit easier, but talking to a lot of other breeders, Leopard Frog Plecos seem to be some of the trickiest ones to breed in the entire hobby. They look absolutely amazing, they're so cool, and they look so different from the other plecos, which makes them really appealing. Because they are hard to breed, that's why the price is there. I should also disclaim that the reason a lot of these plecos cost so much here in Australia is because they can't be imported. Any that are here have either been smuggled in illegally, or they've been here since the ban was put in place in like the early 2000s, I think. People have just been breeding them since then. So that obviously boosts the price up because you can't just import them from overseas, and that's what makes everything here so expensive. Normally, it's a little bit of a monopoly if someone has something available and someone really wants it, but there's no one else to compete with them, the price is just gonna explode. So that's why everything here costs so much. Coming in at number three is the Leopard Frog Pleco. And then coming in at number two on my list is gonna be Discus. I've only got two Discus in the fish room at the moment. I've had heaps of Discus in the past, but I've kind of found them something a little bit annoying for this fish room, just because I'm capped with size in this room. So I don't have a lot of grow out space for big fish like Discus. In the future fish room, I'm definitely gonna be doing a lot of Discus breeding once I get a lot more space and can actually take care of them properly. But until then, we've got our pair, the OG pair, Lemon and Clementine. These guys are worth about 600 bucks each. That might seem really expensive and that's because it kind of is. Lemon and Clementine are a special strain of discus called Flora Discus. They're actually a Flora snake skin and a Flora. Another reason they're super expensive is because they're a breeding pair. Lemon and Clementine's fry cost about 45 to 50 bucks each, but as a breeding pair, they're probably one of the most expensive things in the whole room. I haven't actually made back my money on this pair and they weren't a great financial decision for the fish room, but they've given me a lot of enjoyment and they are one of my favorite fish in the fish room. That's because they're so personable and they always come and greet me in the morning when I come in and they're super happy to see me and they're like little water puppies. So I really do like discus. They've got a really soft spot in my heart, but it's just been a little bit of like a catch-22 where I can't really do it properly and it's been a little bit frustrating and I haven't really been able to appreciate them like I should be. So yeah, number two on my list is gonna be discus at around 600 bucks each. That price is a little bit skewed because they're a breeding pair, that's how much they cost. And they are one of the most expensive in the room. Now the moment you guys have all been waiting for and a lot of people who've been watching the channel would have guessed this before the video even started. Coming in at number one is gonna be my zebra plecos. Across the world, zebra plecos are regarded as one of the more expensive fish in the entire hobby. And they're the king of the pleco world. There's probably plecos that cost a lot more than zebras, but here in Australia, zebras are one of the more expensive things in the entire hobby. Now zebra pleco fry can cost from about 500 bucks each to 800 bucks each, depending on who you get them from and at what size. And then when we go into breeding colonies, they can just be ridiculously expensive. It all depends on sexes. A lot of people get funny when they find females for sale. They spend a lot of money on females. And I recently heard of a guy selling 14 of them for 25 grand. You can see how expensive they are. They're in really hard demand. And I'm really happy to have a bunch of them in my room. Not because they cost a lot, but more because I've wanted to breed them for a little bit now. They're like the pinnacle of the pleco keeping world. To breed the zebra plecos means you kind of made it in the pleco kingdom. <laughs> I sound probably super cringe, but they're really expensive and they're really cool. They have that zebra pattern and they stay really small, so a lot of people can keep them. They're actually quite easy to take care of and they're pretty hardy, in my opinion. I had one kind of close call with one of my zebra plecos where I nearly killed it because it got stuck under a piece of driftwood and there's a video on my channel where I talked about that. Besides that, I haven't had any issues with them and fingers crossed I won't have any more issues with them and we should hopefully be able to breed them this year so that'll make some amazing content. As you would have guessed it, yeah, zebra plecos are at the top of my list. Anyways guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you guys found this enjoyable or learnt something or at least found it entertaining and I'll see you guys in the next one.